Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I'm going to be doing something that I've never really done before on my channel, and that's talk about survival knives. The only time I ever really tend to talk about survival knives on my channel is that I tend to make fun of videos where people are talking about them because uh, I, I think that it is uh, elevated to a degree of importance that I think is uh, out of sync with its actual uh, relative importance to other things like food and water uh, and whatnot. Uh, but that said, I do use knives all the time and I, I guess a lot of you guys have been looking for some pointers on what would be a nice knife to start off with. So I'm going to do a video about the ultimate survival knife, except let's get rid of the word ultimate. I hate that idea that, you know, people get fixated in this sense that, you know, if, if you can't get the ultimate one or you can't do the best, you might as well do nothing at all. And that's just it's ridiculous. It's uh, counter uh, counter to the whole idea of preparedness, which is the idea of trying to do the best you can with what you have. So let's get rid of the idea of what's the best knife. And I'm going to talk about a couple different knives that I use on an uh, ongoing basis. And I'm going to talk about some of the pros and the cons of each of them. I use all of these. Uh, and the reason that I use all of these is because they all have kind of different uh, functionality. That doesn't mean that, you know, if you want to be functional, you need to have a bunch of different knives. But I'm going to talk about uh, sort of the features of a bunch of these. And you can decide what might be good for whatever application that, uh, that you have. Now, knives break into two different categories. There may be other categories that I'm not aware of, but the two big categories are fixed blades and uh, folding knives, so where the, you kind of flip the, the blade out. Now, there are uh, pros and cons to each of these, but the general pro of a fixed blade knife is it's going to be stronger. It doesn't have a moving part in there. There's uh, uh, so there's less weakness. Whenever you have something that kind of moves and bends and flexes, that's always a, a, a point of potential failure. So if you're having a fixed blade knife, it's going to be a lot more rugged. But the downside of a fixed blade knife is that they, they don't fold down, so they're a little bit bigger for carrying around with you. You need to have some kind of a sheath for them because they don't uh, fold down into their own blade. So you also have to have a, you know, a sheath that you're bringing around with you. Uh, and obviously, the benefits of the uh, flip-out knives, uh, the, the folding knives, are that they do uh, fold up, so you end up having a knife that uh, folds up about half the length that it is when you're using it. Uh, and the downside of them is that they do have that kind of uh, potential weakness. Now, it doesn't mean that they're all weak or if you try to cut with them, they're just going to all fall apart. There are better ones and there are uh, ones that aren't so good. And we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, in this video. But that is kind of the general balance, balancing act that you have with fixed blade knives versus folding knives. Fixed blade, more rigid folding knives, usually easier to carry and a little bit uh, more versatile for different types of things that you might want to do with them. So I'm going to start with fixed blade knives because those are uh, simpler and I've got three of those and I've got two fl uh, flip out uh, folding knives that we're going to talk about. I'm going to start with this knife here because this is the cheapest knife. This knife here comes with a sheath and it comes with even a fire starter, this little fire starting uh, thing that comes with these uh, knife sets. These are super cheap. This thing here is 10 bucks. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with this knife. You can do an awful lot of great things with this knife. It holds a, a pretty decent edge. Uh, the downsides of this knife is that the handle is not uh, quite as comfortable as the handle of other knives because it's just punched out of metal. Uh, you know, the quality of the, of the steel on it isn't quite as good as the quality of uh, some other steel, uh, steel. But if you are comparing this to a much more expensive knife and you compare both of them to having no knife at all, this is so much closer to having a really good knife than it is to having no knife at all that I think knives like this are really worth consideration, especially because they're so inexpensive. A while back I bought quite a few of these and I just stashed them around my house in different places, not because of my like crazy defensive plans or whatever, but uh, I have one of these where I open mail uh, if I need to open up a package. I have one of these in my pantry uh, where I might need to you know, open up a box of, you know, you know, pasta sauce or something like that. It's a handy thing to have around. And while I couldn't afford to have a bunch of expensive knives all around the house, for knives that are just $10, I can put them in a lot of different places and I never get into that situation where I'm like, oh, I, have an, I need a knife and I don't have one right on my person right now. Fortunately, I got one right where I, I need it. So I kind of put these around the house and the price point on these is really great. They come with a fire starter, like I mentioned. That's kind of... Uh, I mean, it's cool and it's sort of a conversation piece, but uh, starting fires with the uh, Faro uh, kind of uh, uh, fire starting rods that these guys come with, it's really a pain in the ass. <laughs> so, you know, if you have the opportunity to have a match, I would definitely recommend a match, but it's, it's kind of an, an added little uh, benefit that you get this little Faro starting rod and you just take the rod and scrape across and you are going to really mess up your knife if you are ever actually using this. So I, I haven't thrown these out yet, just I'm kind of the kind of guy that doesn't like throwing out anything uh, if it has any kind of a utility to it uh, but I you know I don't I've never used it for actually starting a fire but it is in there so that's uh, the first 
fixed blade knife, just $10. And uh, you know, I use these all around my house for basic things. The next fixed blade knife that I use uh, kind of uh, second most is one that I bring around with me and this is a small knife that's made by SOG. It comes with its own little uh, carrying sheath just like the other one. This came, came with a canvas carrying sheath. This one comes with a nice plastic carrying sheath and I keep this knife on my bu uh, bug out bag, my EDC bag all the time. It's right on my hip so I always have access to a knife and I am always using this. I know I just recently did a video about bug out bags and I had a you know a number of people um, most of them Europeans for whatever reason saying, oh, you Americans, you're crazy, you know, because you, you think that you, you, know, you need to carry all this stuff on you all the time. I use this knife all the time, whether I am, uh, you know, just cutting through some rope or I need to open up a package or I, you know, want to cut some food or something like that. I don't, I don't know if people in Europe don't, don't have packages and don't use rope and don't eat, uh, but I use my knife that I carry on my EDC pack all the time. So I find it really, really helpful. Now this one is made by SOG. This one is more expensive. I forget the actual cost of this, but it's more than $10, I can tell you that. One downside of this knife is that, again, it is punched out of metal, similarly, similarly to this uh, $10 knife and they've got a little bit of plastic that they've kind of put around it but I still felt like holding this thing was really uh, kind of aggressive on my hands when I was trying to work with it while well, I would use this for whittling like if I'm camping and I want to uh, whittle a uh uh, skewer for doing marshmallows or something like that. I know us Americans and our, our, our addiction to actually eating and everything. Uh, you know, I would, I would tend to use this and you know, when I was going through wood, it, uh, you know, it was rough on my hand. So what I did is I took uh, some of this, uh, it's kind of a cloth ribbon and I wrapped it around it and hot glued it down. The hot glue is actually not holding super well. I'm thinking about maybe getting some paracord and coming up with a different solution to this. Uh, but overall, I think this is a really nice knife. SOG makes really good products. The steel on this seems like it holds an edge uh, really well. I really I really like this knife and I like that it's so tiny. Uh, you know, a lot of times, well, I think, you know, with teenage boys, when they first want to get like a survival knife, they want to, well, maybe they've seen the movie Rambo or whatever the modern equivalent of Rambo is. They want to get something that's like 20 feet long. And it's like, that's kind of like more of a short sword that you got there, bro. Uh, short knives are really, are really great because you know most of the time you don't really need a very long blade and, and there are all sorts of regulations uh, you know here in the United States anyway about how long a blade can be and uh, you know for going into different areas when I have a, like a really short knife like this I don't have to worry that I'm uh, you know breaking the rules anywhere I mean that said there are places you just can't bring a knife into anyway but most of the time when I'm cutting something I don't need a gigantic knife and having a smaller knife it's less weight it's less uh, you know space being taken up I don't have to worry about the legal kind of ramifications of having a larger knife uh, and, uh, you know, I like small blades. <laughs> and you can interpret that in whatever Freudian way that you might like. So uh, this SOG blade, I think, is really great. I carry it with me all the time, every day, and I am very, very frequently using it. Here's another fixed blade knife. This is the last fixed blade knife that we're gonna talk about. This is also made by SOG, and I don't use this one as much. It's a great knife. It's really comfortable to hold. It comes with this really nice sheath. Here is a, it's a really nice knife. It's balanced really nicely. It, it doesn't feel super heavy, but it's a lot bigger than this thing. So when I'm traveling around, I'm always using the smaller one. I keep this one in my camping pack and you know, I've used it when I'm, I'm camping and it's a, it's an absolutely wonderful knife, but you know, because it's bigger and because it doesn't fold up, I don't think I don't tend to carry it with me that frequently. It's only in my pack when I go camping, and uh, because of that, it doesn't get as much use. So that's that's a real consideration that you should uh, think about when you are choosing what kind of a knife that you want. Maybe there is a knife that is better, like this one. It has a more comfortable handle. Uh, you know, it, it's going to be useful for more things than the smaller blades. But if it's just too too big for me to bother to carry around with me all the time, I, you know, you can strap it on your belt and everything like that. But it's more of a chore to carry something like this. So if you find that you're not going to carry it around anyway, you know, what's, it's kind of like almost what's the purpose of owning something if you're not going to have it when you need it. Uh, something that's sort of similar to that, which is also in my bug out bag, and I'm going to just kind of have a little tangential uh, sort of uh, example here, is solar panels. This is a little solar panel that I use for charging batteries, a little uh, uh, AAA or AA battery charger in the back. I'll bring this with me wherever I go. I have larger flip out solar panels, but the larger flip out solar panels, they don't fit in my backpack very easily. They're heavier, they're bulkier. And because of that, 
I just don't tend to bring them anywhere. So it, it gets to the idea of this one is smaller. It's not as fast to charge batteries, but if the other ones are so big and bulky that I just tend not to even bring them with me anyway, you know, what's the value of having something that's better if you're, you're not carrying it around with yourself? So there's really something to be said for tiny little things that you know you're going to actually keep on your person. So those are all the fixed knives that we're going to talk about in this video. The last two knives that I want to talk about are folding knives. And we're going to start with the uh, the less expensive one. This is a small folding knife that's made by Gerber. I really like this one. I've had this for decades and decades. Uh, it's gotten a little bit snug in here where it's a little hard for me to get it out with my my finger there. Uh, but it's, it's sort of one-handed operation. You can uh, collapse it in the same way. So I always feel like I'm about to slap, uh, snap my finger off or slice myself when I uh, do one-handed operation with this. But uh, it's a pretty handy blade. And what I really like about it is this big hole right in the middle there, you can get your finger through. I mean, it's kind of a neat design feature, but there are a couple of real big benefits that you get by having this hole. One is for safety. I'm putting my finger through there when I'm cutting and it makes my hand a lot more interlocked with this knife. The knife is less likely to kind of flip or roll around in my hand. I feel like I have a really good grasp on the, on the knife element in here. And that's a really great thing. And the other uh, uh, great benefit of having uh, this hole right through the middle is that the blade joins the handle all, all around here. So you've got this really wide section where the blade is married to the handle. Some folding knives, they just have a little hinge, kind of pivot point in the back there. And that is a lot less uh, structurally uh, rigid than having something that has this really big connection point. So I really, I really like this, this knife. I've used it for many years. It used to have a serrated blade, but I've sharpened it so many times, the blade's not even serrated anymore. I use this thing all the time and uh, I, for the price, made by Gerber, uh, I think these things are like twenty or thirty dollars or something like that. It's a really, really nice knife. I would highly recommend that uh, this knife. If you're just starting off and you're looking for a flip-out knife, or you know, uh, you know, even a even a fixed blade knife, I think this is competitive with them because of this this wide uh, connection point. And you know, if I was going to rank the ultimate knife of all of these for ver all-around versatility, it's this one right here. Uh, it, it's very uh, cost effective. It's, it's rigid for a uh, fold up knife. It does fold up, so it's really easy to carry around on you. I really like this Gerber. The next one that we're going to talk about is this made by Spider. This is way more expensive. I, I looked at the current retail on this and I did not pay what current retail was on this with price inflation and everything like that. The price on these are absolutely insane. I would not recommend getting this knife. It's a really cool knife. It's a really beautiful knife. It has uh, Damascus steel in the blade here. Uh, although it's more of a design feature than anything else because the, the, uh, the folded uh, Damascus uh, metal in there doesn't actually come all the way down to the blade. Uh, so I think it's more of a cosmetic feature. The idea with Damascus steel is that you are folding layers of steel up on top of each other and you have the hardest layers of steel in the middle and they go to softer layers of steel on the outside. So the, the knife kind of almost self sharpens the way that cat's claws uh, sharpen the more that they use them because you're wearing away the stuff on the outside more than you wear away the stuff on the inside because the stuff on the inside is harder. So the knife kind of self sharpens the more that you use it. That's the whole idea of Damascus steel. And uh, this one has a Damascus steel pattern of all this folded metal on the back. But based on the fact that the area around the blade, the blade real estate doesn't have any of it, I think it's kind of more of a cosmetic thing. It is a beautiful knife. It feels nice in the hand. It's easy to kind of fold up. It's very snappy. One thing that I like about this over this uh, this Gerber blade is the blade on this uh, perhaps because it's a harder steel it's very uh, it's a very thin blade I do carry this in my uh, uh, EDC pack and whenever I want to cut up an apple or something like that I'm using this blade because it's thinner if you imagine cutting an apple and you have a thick blade it's sort of well imagine trying to cut an apple with an axe you know you you're not going to get a nice clean cut it's going to like kind of like pop pieces off the side because you got that thickness of the axe trying to like uh, wedge things apart as you go through there's a lot thinner so I do use this but I wouldn't recommend it because the cost is just so ridiculous at this point. Uh, you know, even when I bought it, it was kind of pricey. I, I had a little bit of spending. Maybe it was like my birthday or something. I was like, I'm going to treat myself. It's a beautiful knife. And I've had it for many years. I really like it. But you don't need to spend this kind of money uh, for a knife. And I wouldn't recommend that you do if you're looking for a, uh, a flip out knife. This kind of thing made by Gerber. Totally fine. And the difference in terms of performance between these, like this one's 99% just as good as this guy here. Now, I mentioned that I had uh, five knives, but I lied. I have one other knife. And the reason I didn't think about it is because I didn't even buy this knife. I found this knife thrown away in a campfire. I was camping somewhere and there was a, it was like a, a 
public family campground. And in the, in the fire ring, someone had taken their knife and thrown it into the fire. You know, you know drunk people do all sorts of ridiculous things. Uh, and I found this, it was all rusted up and looked horrible, but I took it, I dis, uh, disassembled it. I took some uh, steel wool and a metal brush, uh, got all the rust off, uh, oiled it up, and now it's, it's an awfully nice knife. Now I can't recommend, uh, this knife, because I oh, actually, you know what? This is made. This one's made by Gerber too, and that is a testament to the uh, the quality of, of Gerber knives. Is that uh, you? You can throw them in a fire, and uh, they can still come out on the other side of it. The only thing that's uh, wrong with this one, I think it had some sort of like plastic lamination here, and the plastic all just burned and melted away. So uh, the thing's a little bit rickety. I've been looking for some sort of some sort of layer that I can put on this one so that I can replace uh, the thickness there, so I can get the thing all kind of locked down again. But uh, yeah, this is just a knife that I got for free. So, you know, you don't even always necessarily have to pay a lot for things. You know, you can go to thrift stores, uh, you know, Salvation Army, Goodwill, that kind of thing. And you can get something that, you know, someone might have paid $30 for. You can get for zero or, you know, maybe maybe a lot less. So if you're looking for uh, some kind of a beginning knife, I would recommend really this, this Gerber with this uh, you know, wide connection point here as a safety of being able to put your finger through it. Uh, but really, whatever you get, you have to understand it's gonna come with pros and it's gonna come with cons. And any knife is gonna be better than no knife at all. So if you're beginning down the journey and you just wanna start with something that's just 10 bucks and you'll kind of feel it out and this will give you your education about like, what are the pros and the cons of a $10 knife? You know, it's not a big deal to start with something like this. And then you can kind of graduate up to something a little bit more expensive, though I wouldn't, necessarily recommend going with these things that are super expensive because the amount of extra niceness or quality that you get with these guys is, uh, you know, in my opinion, it's, it's not worth the additional cost unless you're like crazy made of money and you got nothing else to do with it. Yeah, sure. You know, go out and buy this kind of thing. But for the rest of us, you know, these kind of guys, these are every bit as good as all the other ones. And, you know, just maybe not quite as beautiful. So I hope you find that helpful. Get the idea of ultimate everything out of your mind. You know, different things have different uh, uh, value to them. And this knife, for the cost of this knife, um, I'm sorry, for the cost of this expensive knife, you could buy 20 of these knives. You know, and which one of those is gonna be more useful to you? One of these, or having 20 of these, where you got one in your car, and one in one side of your house, and one in your, bug out bag and you know sometimes just having more of something can be better than having a, a potentially higher quality version of one of those things so you have to kind of balance uh, a lot of the, uh, the the cost of things with that in mind as well because what is the opportunity cost of spending that extra money that you could spend on either extra knives or food you know uh, other things that I think potentially are maybe even more expensive than knives. Uh, I'm sorry not even more expensive more important than knives because uh, you can't eat that that's it Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for new videos all the time. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so either through Patreon or PayPal.